war. It is the only thing that always guarantees change. In 1941, the Nazis had invaded Poland, France, and the Low Countries. England was devastated following the Battle of Britain. With the attack on Pearl Harbor, the United States is officially a major player in World War II, and what happened next would change the course of history. No, no, not a bomb or anything like that. Just, you know, well, I think you know where this is going. World War II, the beginning of the Jeep, and the beginning also of the Jeep equipment story. Back in the late fall of 1940, a small, four-wheel drive prototype known as the Willys Quad showed up on the U.S. Army's doorstep. No less than four years later, over 360,000 Willys Jeeps had rolled off American assembly lines. The Willys Jeep took man to places it had never ventured before and ultimately became one of the most legendary people movers of all time. Of course, the Willys cemented a legacy for this to follow. And this is a Jeep Cherokee. Coded internally is the XJ, this is a compact, unibody-constructed, off-road machine that tackled the age-old problem of getting people where they need to go. Jeep Cherokee has some advantages you ought to look into, like superior cargo room and room for five with a choice of two or four doors and four-wheel drive you can shift on the fly. But the most important advantage, Cherokee is all Jeep, inside and out. World wars among big powers are quite possible to control dwindling oil supply. In the 1970s, the world was faced with another crisis. Not another world war, this time it was really just about one thing. Gas. Scarcity and high prices of oil eventually forced Congress to pass the Energy Policy and Conservation Act of 1975. But before the crisis, gas mileage wasn't even given a second thought. And now, automakers had to double their mile per gallon figures in less than a decade. This is unreal. Isn't this disgusting? Why doesn't anybody contact the president? Why is he letting this happen to us? Here's the thing. These new regulations changed everything for these automakers, especially Jeep. This was like showing up to a fashion show where really, really ridiculously good-looking hair had suddenly been banned, and people had to strip down the runway bald. No! No! Come back here, Mugatu! Despite these new regulations, which forced them to redesign their entire CJ lineup, Jeep remained hugely popular in the late 70s. But there was no denying AMC's financial difficulty. Hemorrhaging money, the company desperately needed a bailout. And along came Renault. Renault, des voitures à vivre. At the time, Renault was a well-known brand and the sixth largest automaker in the world. Supported by the French government, they were looking to expand. Eyes set on a struggling AMC, they made their move. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. The French are actually doing something besides surrendering? Well, here's the thing. AMC and the other American automakers were not doing so hot with these regulations. Whereas in Europe, it was a different story. So on October 12th of 1979, Renault announced it would buy a significant stake in American Motors Corporation and come together to produce an all-new line of cars in the USA by 1982. With the keys to the kingdom, Renault started selling their line of cars and dealers across the country and ultimately owned more than 46% of the AMC Corporation. Everything was going great for Renault. Jeep sales were up almost 40% from 82 to 83. The alliance was selling like crazy, and Americans were starting to buy cars again. But like any good company does, Renault had hidden their best hand at the poker table. They had an ace up their sleeve, one that they'd been developing for almost half a decade. Back in 1978, AMC desperately needed to replace their current Cherokee, the SJ. The 20-year-old design was outdated to say the least, and it tipped the scales at over 4,000 pounds. With its thirsty V8 and horrible gas mileage, they started a blank slate project and the XJ name was born. With the man responsible for some notoriously, uh, interesting cars at the helm, none other than Dick Teague, AMC set about designing an entirely new vehicle. Seeing the strong influence of the fuel crisis, AMC made the monumental decision to use a unibody design on an SUV. 
This had never been done before, and pretty much anything 4x4, wagon, or SUV based used a body on frame design. AMC rejected this entirely. They thought outside the box, pun intended, and posed the question, why not combine the body and the frame to save weight? Little did they know this at the time, their idea was lightning in a bottle. Seeing an $150 million cash injection from Renault in 79, things got serious. To develop the suspension, Renault shipped in their man, Francois Castel. You know, the former chief engineer of Renault's Formula One racing team, the obvious pick. So yeah, the next time someone asks you about your XJ, tell them the suspension was F1 designed. Renault also had designers on board to shape early clay models of the XJ, though AMC and Chrysler both insisted the design was done entirely in-house. See, you can trust me. So clearly it was no secret that the final product had heavy European influence and design cues. With unibody design and compact dimensions, the full-length box steel frame welded around the perimeter of the floor pan made it lightweight, efficient, and strong. But as we already talked about, Jeep wasn't a new face when it came to designing reliable off-roaders. But AMC and Renault wanted to provide a better ride than one typically achieved from a live, solid front axle. Answering to AMC Vice President Roy Long, Castang and the team found a solution. Using four trailing links and a pan hard rod, they were able to retain a solid front axle for off-roading purposes and replace the typical leaf spring setup with coil springs for handling and comfort. The engineers named their creation Quadrilet, and low-pressure gas shocks and an anti-sway bar were the icing on the cake. When AMC didn't have the resources to do lengthy tests on the XJ, Lund entered two units of the XJ into the Paris Dakar Rally in 83, and both of them finished with nothing to worry about besides worn shock absorbers. Even though there was no victory to boast, finishing the 6,000 mile rally in one piece was a huge win in itself. To maximize rear cargo space, the XJ kept traditional rear leaf springs. From the get-go, AMC had designed the XJ to debut its homegrown 2.4-liter four-cylinder engine. It used iron block and head construction with single overhead valves and a one-barrel carburetor. General Motors' 2.8-liter V6 with a two-barrel carb was also optional, but it only boasted an additional 10 horsepower and a handful of torque. A's and Warner provided their AX4 and AX5 manual transmissions, while AMC borrowed a three-speed automatic transmission for Chrysler that became optional. More importantly, the Cherokee was available with shift-on-the-fly four-wheel drive through a vacuum-actuated front axle with auto-locking hubs. The standard part-time system, Command Track, was activated by an easily accessible handle on the center console. Revolutionary stuff. Controlled electronically, Select Track was optional and could keep all four wheels spinning permanently. So for the young adventurer, soccer mom, and everyone in between, this sport wagon could really do it all. Every once in a while, something extraordinary comes along and forces the world around it to change, never to be the same again. The iPhone, airplanes, even Netflix. For those that are lucky enough to see it coming, there's a window of opportunity to prepare and play catch up. But in the case of all these inventions, they struggled even after their initial success. The XJ simply didn't. Four Wheeler Magazine's full of Wheeler of the Year is Jeep Cherokee. Four Wheeler with Off Road's 4x4 of the Year is Jeep Cherokee. Off Road makes it unanimous. When it debuted in 1984, the XJ Cherokee was named 4x4 of the Year by every major off road magazine. Car and Driver, Motor Trend, and Road and Track all raved about its styling, versatility, and comfort. If that wasn't enough, popular mechanics named the four wheel drive Cherokee, quote, one of the 10 best cars of 1986. It was the only SUV on the list, which included the likes of the Mercedes Benz 190 and the Porsche 944 Turbo. In Europe, the XJ took home four wheeler of the year where it was sold with a 2.1 liter Renault turbo diesel. Consumer Guide named the Cherokee and upscale Wagoneer variations as best buys in their class. What AMC had done was unheard of. In a column written by the famous car and driver editor Don Sherman, he wrote, I'm most impressed by what the engineers have accomplished with two rigid axles. These things went out with full carts, you know, but the system does work here. 
So, the XJ combined a spacious interior, off-road capability, serious reliability, and practicality into one thing that would pave the way for an entirely new segment of automobiles to follow. Nothing in Cherokee's class even comes close. In fact, with this engine and a choice of two or four doors and two shift-on-the-fly four-wheel drive systems, you could say nothing's in Cherokee's class. For the 1985 model year, the plush Wagoneer presented a new grill and plenty of power options, and it gained a limited trim level. Meanwhile, two-door Cherokees were now offered with two-wheel drive, and any Cherokee could be had with an off-road package consisting of yellow high-pressure gas shock absorbers, knobbier tires, skid plates, tow hooks, and a limited slip rear differential. Overall, the XJ was offered in base, Pioneer, Laredo, and Chief trim levels, honing in on a variety of consumer values and applications, while the wood panel Wagoneer Limited and base models could also be had as well. The Renault turbo diesel was also brought stateside and the options list expanded. A swing-away rear tire carrier and keyless entry were now offered for all Cherokees. Car and Driver also wrote about the XJ that it, quote, has better ground clearance, a better ride, and more wheel travel than its most obvious competitors. And it's a genuine delight in heavy going. Truly a low buck Range Rover. Prices started at just $10,405. But on the topic of Range Rovers, it's important to note that the XJ was definitely not perfect and needed some tweaking. The GM Source 2.8 liter V6 was loud and definitely lacking the reliability department. Despite its major success and moving more than 300,000 units in the first three years, AMC dropped another bombshell. We've all heard the saying, when life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. And in this case, AMC had made some damn good lemonade. However, the sourness was still there. Even with Jeep's great success, AMC was still in the red desperately clinging to a mere 1% of the US market. But remember that three-speed automatic that they borrowed from Chrysler? On March 10th of 1987, Chrysler decided it wanted to borrow the Jeep brand, permanently, and inked a deal to buy AMC for the small sum of, you know, $1.5 billion. That's a lot of f***ing lemonade. The man responsible for what was the largest domestic acquisition ever was none other than the automotive legend Lee Iacocca. Serving as Chrysler's chairman, he described their motivation for acquiring AMC to be, in quote, worldwide opportunities to exploit the Jeep name. So Jeep dropped the GM 2.8 liter V6 after 1986, and in its place, they stuffed an AMC inline six displacing exactly four liters of fury. To shift gears, Chrysler turned to Aizen Saiki of Japan and Warner Gear in the US to supply the AW4, a four-speed automatic. The pesky dash switches for early select track were also dropped in favor of the command track style center console mounted handle. This was a winning recipe and one that would last for more than a decade. Effective immediately, Jeep also introduced the Sport and Limited Cherokee trims, the latter of which one could expect to find in a suburban driveway next to a Mercedes or BMW. Other major changes came in 1989 when Cherokee became the first light truck available with four-wheel ABS. In 1990, the 1 millionth XJ was produced. Demand for the 4-liter equipped Cherokee was so overwhelming that Jeep pivoted to anchor their entire lineup around the four-door sport model and decided that they were done with various Renault and Bendix components. The legendary 4.0 neared its final form with intake and exhaust system revisions. The Wagoneer underwent a name change to the Briarwood. While it was short-lived and ultimately cut in 92, Chrysler revisited an XJ convertible incepted under AMC. Though it never made it to production, dubbed the Jeep Freedom Concept, this feat of automotive engineering featured a power top and a sport bar. Had it gotten a chance to shine, it surely would have rivaled other icons. Sorry Nissan Cross Cabriolet fans, this one's better. Outside of compliance updates, including airbags, a center-mounted tail lamp, and OBD2 provided by Chrysler's JTEC system, there were no major changes to the XJ Cherokee lineup besides the country trim level until its facelift for 1997 model year. 
the XJ finally received a series of changes after 13 years of production. Echoing a fading era of boxy, angular styling, the update retained the overall styling. But a more contemporary and aerodynamic look was unveiled, with new fenders, side moldings, wheel designs, and interior to enhance its aesthetic. The dashboard was completely replaced to incorporate ergonomic appeal through a revamp of the passenger compartment, added cup holders, new seats, and dual climate control. Moreover, dual airbags became standard, noise-reducing material was added, and customer complaints were addressed. In total, Chrysler spent just $215 million redesigning it. But like the old saying goes, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. More than 2 million XJs had now been produced and sold in the USA in over 100 countries around the world. The 97 facelift had not just revitalized the model, but also solidified its status as a timeless classic, capturing the hearts of off-road and car enthusiasts alike, embellishing Jeep's legacy. Although the XJ was not without its competition, well, every masterpiece has its cheap copy, these stood as a testament to the revolution the XJ started in the automotive world. When production ended in June of 2001, 2,884,172 Jeep XJs had been built over the 18-year production run. Honoring 60 years since our soldiers first drove a Willys onto the battlefields, the XJ was one of the last breaths of old-school ingenuity. Throughout its storied history, the XJ symbolized America's pioneering and adventurous nature. It was the first successful unibody SUV, forging its own path with go-anywhere capabilities and reliability. As a whole, it captured the spirit of America, with its ability to push boundaries and embrace the unknown. Today, more than 80% of new cars sold in the US are SUVs or trucks. And more often than not, SUVs rely on none other than a unibody design. We all know that Jeep wrote the book on four-wheel drive, but what's been left out is that they also own the blueprint to the design that now dominates the car industry. Even in the face of the greatest of adversity, world wars, bankruptcy, fuel crises, the XJ shows that sometimes change isn't just a risk, it's a necessity.